All right. So I just literally dropped a video. And when I say just, I mean, I probably posted the video about 15 minutes ago talking about Mark Eversley and reported interest the Portland Trailblazers may have in him. But as soon as I pressed upload on that, and I start, I thought about taking it down and re-recording, but I figured, why not just go live? Javante Green has entered the NBA safe uh, health and safety protocols. He's going to be out the next game. He's probably going to miss 10 days as well, like Vooch did, like Kobe White's expected to do. And so this, it, I want to talk about it from, from a couple of different places. The first place and the easiest place to talk about it from is what that means for the Bulls um, in, in the next couple of games, just miss, missing Javante Green. Um, it can mean, uh, you know, I mean, Yes, Javante is an important piece of this team. Don't get me wrong. Um, his energy, his athleticism, his defense on bigs. But Derrick Jones Jr. showed that he's ready. I don't know if the Bulls go with starting him. I don't know what's going on with that. But the bigger the bigger thing that I want to talk about here is not just Javante Green missing, but with the Bulls traveling together, right? And now we have two players that are placed in the NBA uh, health and safety protocols. Don't be surprised if more get placed in it over the course of the next week or so. That's the thing that I want to talk about as well as like, we could be seeing a mini outbreak happening in the NBA overall, right? Because we know it happened with Embiid, Vooch. There's been a couple of other players, LeBron, um, which I think he's out of it now or whatever, but um, don't be surprised if like we see more Bulls players, go into the, the health and safety protocol and what that could mean to like our momentum, our run, uh, the chemistry building on this team. We already know like missing games is going to be huge for Kobe White because if he's still trying to work himself in the rotation and everything like that, and he has to quarantine, right? So it's not like he can even go to the Bulls practice facility to work out or anything. He has to, he has to quarantine. Now, unless he has a great workout uh, equipment where he is, he may lose some of the conditioning that he's still been trying to build with Javante Green. Yes, the long-term effects of this, we're not, we're not like Javante. This isn't going to be something that like affects Javante Green's the rest of his season. But the Bulls are in a, a space now where like every game matters, right? They're still trying to build that chemistry. We see that they're still trying to figure their way how to beat the zone, how to stop uh, these uh, times where they just can't score, everything like that. Caruso being being questionable. Uh, again, like I said, it, all of it takes is somebody else, like Zach, DeMar, knock on wood. I don't want to see anybody else go into it, but don't be surprised if it happens. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about here is that how this mini, it seemed like COVID outbreak um, in the on the Bulls roster, we can be seeing the effects of this and we can be seeing more players placed in the safety protocol. Who knows? I don't know what goes into the NBA's like contact tracing and everything like that when it comes to the COVID. Um, but only because like you would think a team traveling together, right? Being on a plane, a bus, whatever it is together, like they've all basically come into contact at some point uh, because of that. So like, we'll see. Luckily, like the Bulls are a fully vaccinated team. So we may see that, you know, that vaccination for them does keep them from, from contracting it. And, you know, not, a lot of people now, and I've seen it in comments and in forums. And when I, when I saw this is that they're like, what's the point of being vaccinated? The point of being vaccinated is that it lessens the chance, right? It lessens the chance, but that it's not, it doesn't eliminate the possibility of contracting um, COVID. So because of that, like, yeah, it sucks. We're seeing what we're seeing now. Um, what's up, Noah? Uh, appreciate you. And Caruso is questionable. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and I just, you know, the other video was uploaded. I, I just wanted to go live. I figured why not interact with you guys, see your guys' reaction to it. It sucks. And overall for this team to continually be facing adversity is going to happen it just sucks that it's happening in the form of this virus uh that they really can't do anything in the uh, about like they're vaccinated they wear their mask between we know that th those are all regulated by the nba um and javante green has been a key piece to this team uh regardless if you like that don't like it or whatever else and you know him going down as soon as the bulls rotation billy donovan does not go deep into the rotation at all as thin as this rotation is it's, at times that happening is just it's scary, right? And I, like I said, I've, I've said it before. I have Bulls fan and PTSD. I think about the worst case scenario almost any time something comes up. So, of course, I'm thinking, all right, what else can happen? Is this going to happen to more players or whatever else? But let me know what you guys think. If you're too worried about it, how do you think the Bulls rebound from uh, not having Javante Green? Do you think DJ just goes into the starting lineup? Uh, Caruso may be questionable as well. Uh, I would say Caruso coming in the starting lineup. 
Io may get get a chance. Alize, who Alize at this point, right? We have to think that either Tony uh Tony Bradley is going to get a lot of minutes. We may see more minutes for Troy Brown Jr. playing out of position too. But you have to think, as this roster keeps getting depleted, we have to see some Alizé at some point. Don't be surprised if we actually get uh, Marco called up again and he gets some minutes maybe. Um, yeah, this game against the Nets, I wanted all hands on deck, right? We, I wanted all hands on deck for this game because it's not going to be an easy game. And the Nets are going to be trying to avenge the loss that they had to us already. So I wanted us to be all hands on deck and as much – energy is Javante green uh brings and everything it could be worse now if caruso was out that game we're gonna be in for a long long night as bulls fans that's just period uh but the game is tomorrow night uh against the brooklyn nets we're gonna be down Javante. alex caruso is questionable god forbid anything else happens in the next 24 hours but we'll be on the lookout you know i'll report on it here i try to get the news out as fast as i can um but yeah, Javante Green, uh, anyone who's joining live, is not very many people. I didn't announce it. This was really an impromptu thing. I was sitting down to record again. Like I said, I just released a video and I figured, why not go live? Let's all react to it as fans together. So if you got any comments, any reactions to Javante Green being out, or or you um or, or are you worried like me that this may be something that we get a couple more players out or somebody else out in the, in the NBA safety uh, health and safety protocols because of what's going on with the Bulls. Seems like there is a mini outbreak in this roster. Uh, luckily, like I said, everyone's vaccinated. So that, of course, brings down the chances of too many people contracting it. Some not doesn't eliminate it. But overall, whoo, this is as my dog comes into into the camera. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's it's it's. The Bulls are going to overcome. The one thing that we have done this season is that we've met every adversity that we faced in some shape, form, or fashion. The next man up type thing. When when Patrick Williams went down, I wonder how we were going to rebound from that, even though he wasn't playing great. And the Bulls have answered. Derrick Jones Jr. is coming on more. Javante Green stepped up every time that he's he's been called on to do things. Um, but does this now – Paired with the fact that the Bulls know they're going to have their own first round pick, which is probably going to be low, uh, low 20s. Do the Bulls finally now pull the trigger for somebody? A lot of questions. There's a lot of different things the Bulls can do. But overall, this team's grit, the weather they play, I do trust it. Um, and it's just going to be next man up. This is NBA basketball. We, you, Hey, if nothing else, especially if we, if we want this team to be able to go on a run, not to say that things like this are good, but it's good for players to be put in situations that, A, they may not be comfortable with, to be to step up when needed to see how they respond to because then we'll know how and when we can trust them in certain situations. So it's gonna it's it's going to be eye opening. It doesn't mean that it's gonna it's gonna uh, turn into wins for us, especially playing against a team like the Nets. But overall, you know, we have this is a long season. Uh, we're fifteen and what eight right now. Um, we've played great over over the course of this season. Uh, we've responded to everything but the zone very well in Philly. Uh, but you know. Overall, losing Javante Green does suck. It sucks. It's, a, it's another kick in the stomach, as I like calling them, in a season that's been filled with kick in the stomach so far this season. From, from losing Patrick Williams to Zach Levine's thumb to Vooch being out to losing Caruso for a game to now Kobe White being out to Javante Green being placed in healthy uh, health NBA health and safety protocols. We have faced a lot of adversity in a short amount of time, really, when you think about it. And it's easy to forget just how many things that we've had to battle back from and, and overcome as a team. And that's going to make this team closer. That's going to bond this this uh, this team closer together. Uh, Tap, Bannister, uh, everybody's vaxxed. Like, I mean, yes, but again, being vaxxed really just lessens the chance, right? It doesn't eliminate it completely, especially when you look at like players traveling, right? Traveling a lot uh, in the NBA. You're around different people every damn day um you never know they're eating not at home on the road whatever else they, they open themselves up to a lot of exposure whereas us the people if we're vaccinated, the people who just work day-to-day -day jobs and lives and we don't really get exposed as much as imagine that like the even just going to the store the people that you don't know that you're exposed to and then times that by 20 with the way that the that nba players travel and then also how they play against like now you have to think about like who was guarding Javante Green last night? Are they going to be like they were exposed to, to COVID? I know they're going to have to test and, you know, people are vaxxed, but it happens and it's unfortunate. But, you know, this this thing, especially with the Marion variant, 
<laughs> the Omicron uh, variant is that we may see another like I, I, I try not to talk about those type of things because I don't want to worry myself. Um, but, you know, I'm a father uh, having another variant that seems more aggressive. You got to keep your mind on those things, man. And it's it's what in like five major cities now they found it in California today. Um, I think New York as well. And we know something hits New York just with the way everything comes in and out of there. It's, it's going to be all over the country very shortly. I know, but damn, we keep getting hit. Yeah, we do. We keep getting hit, and it sucks. Um, absolutely, I think uh, Vooch initially got it from Embiid. It's just what I think. Um, but, you know, it shit happens. Shit happens, man. This is the new NBA. They're not playing in the bubble now, so it does suck. It does suck. But, you know, we got to deal with it. Every NBA team is probably going to deal with it at some point this season. And because, like I said, especially the team, the team traveling together, playing together, huddling together, everything like that. Um, when one person gets on the team, there's a higher outlook or chance that other players may get it as well. And that's what we're dealing with right now. That is what we're dealing with right now. We'll see what happens. And hopefully we have Caruso available uh, next. And the good thing about it with Javante Green, Javante Green gives us great minutes, great energy. But. If there's anyone who's kind of easiest right now on this roster to fill that void, Javante Greens is like nobody really can match his energy on this team, right? But if you look at the way Derrick Jones Jr. has been playing, uh, Tony Bradley's really going to have to step it up and give us some some major minutes. Troy Brown Jr. also looked like he was he was in that first half. Troy Brown Jr. gave us some great minutes, so you know it is what it is. This is not good for the Bulls. They already have Kobe White out and now Javante Green. The Bulls have been able to respond very well, though, but they have to play very, that much harder now to win games. Yeah, and Javante Green gives you energy, right? He gives you energy. He can knock down open shots more times than not. Um, and, he, you know, he doesn't take a lot of shots. And that's that's the type of player that's always good to have on the team is that a player that you don't have to call offense for, right? The, I, I, the Bulls have probably not called any plays for Javante Green this season. But uh, if if when he gets open shots, you trust him to you, you're not completely scared shitless when he shoots it. Right. Because you trust more than likely than not, he's going to be able to get it. So, yeah, it, it's it's it looks easy on paper to fill to fill the production that Javante Green gives us. But the actual energy and all the things that don't show up on the stat sheet are going to be hard to replicate. But that doesn't mean we can't get it in a different way. Um, this team is going to have to come out. They're already probably going to be fired up to play the play the Nets. They could win that game and be the number one team in the East. Yes, that doesn't matter this early on. We're in December, really until February, March, it being first or whatever. It doesn't matter to a degree, but you got to think that means a lot to this team to be able to beat that team that's currently number one in the East. So uh, definitely, definitely hurts. Definitely hurts for sure. Uh, I'm going to open it up. This was not meant to be like a long live stream. I just because I just uploaded the video, I didn't want to wait for another one to upload. So I decided I might as well stream it. We can all panic together. Any thoughts, comments, questions, anything? Uh, go ahead and leave them in the comment section right now. Um, and we'll see. Uh, do you think we're going to see more trades in the future? Yeah, I mean, the, well, let me say this. Maybe not trades. Moves, though. Moves, absolutely. Um, AK is going to keep... Um, improving this team i don't have any doubts of that so because of that yes i think that we're gonna see more moves before before the trade deadline or at least by the buyout market because i, I and the thing is just like with the tampering thing the one thing that tampering does tell you is that we have a front office that is communicating right and i think and i trust that if we don't make a trade it's because ak is getting some some type of information that's telling him the guy that he wants is going to get bought out he's going to be able to improve this team through the buyout market so yes we're definitely we're definitely getting moves um major moves i don't know anything major i think right now we're going to be filling holes right unless somebody just becomes available that we're not expecting or that a team is just ready to just give away because they want to go into a rebuild other than that i don't think it's going to be major right but by major what i mean is that to fill the hole in the gap we have at the four to get that rebounding shot blocking a uh, big who can hit open shots that doesn't need offense call for him like basically a javante green that's like Six nine is is what is what I think AK is going to go after. Um, and you know, and the thing is too is that we say that right, but with the way Billy Donovan plays this roster, it's really open to anybody, right? You can completely see the Bulls signing a six seven power forward, 
I'm mean, sorry, six, seven small forward and playing them at the four if they have some length and they have that rebounding ability. So it's really open to anything, but I do trust that they're going to make that uh, make a move. We're going to get a move, major move. I don't know if it's going to happen this season. I really do think they're going to try to fill the gap at the four um, in the best way that they can. May not be a major move, but then off season, right around the trade uh, trade time, uh, the Bulls have two first round picks. That that is those are very good bargaining chips for a team that's getting rid of somebody, right? To even say that you get two first rounders for somebody, we've seen teams, rather ones in right outside the lottery, runs in the in the twenties. I trust AK to make moves, and and we'll well can, we can't trade our first round pick. Well, I think we can trade it after we draft them, right? So technically, we would have to be drafting for somebody. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. But I definitely think something something's happening. What's going on, uh, Torian? What's good, bro? What's good, man? We need to link up and collab again, man, for sure. Flight, yep, definitely. Shout out to Flight Sports, man. Uh, TV. That was the first with sports other person show that I've been on. That's that's the only so far. Like I called in, um, it was all love there. So yeah, yeah, and you know they left me a voicemail as well. So I had to I had to show up and show love, man. I, I love collabing. I love doing this. As you guys can see, I've dropped three videos now, counting this live stream in like the last twelve hours. So. You know, it is what it is. But uh, any last question, comments? We are 16 minutes live stream, and I'm going to go ahead and go to the 20-minute mark, right? So we got basically four more minutes of this stream. I'm going to cut it short. I wasn't expecting to do this. I got to make my kids dinner. My kids are here tonight. So uh, we got to make my kids dinner as well as do something. My birthday is Sunday. Um, so I'm going to do something on the channel Sunday for my birthday. It may be – I may drop a video that's like my favorite – bulls moments as a fan right and keep in mind i'm 35 years old i'll be 35 on sunday and i've been a bulls fan since i was a child so like i have a lot of bulls memories a lot of bulls memories so i may drop that as well well wow, this is just as bad as guys getting injured and missing games three of our players in a row i hope it's over now uh, i mean i don't ever know if it's over but we'll see we'll see Wow, Flight Sports TV with, with the Super Chat. I appreciate that, bro. Much love, bro. We're going to do it again. Absolutely. absolutely. Be on the lookout for, for collabs from me and Flight Sports TV. We need to work out the schedule. I've been trying to, uh, before reaching out, like really, I want to get my live streaming schedule up like and completely finalized, and then I'm going to start reaching out to other Bulls content creators and just content creators in general, depending on if I'm facing their team. So we can have more guests doing the live stream last night with Juju no sports was really great. It was great because I didn't have to talk the full hour and a half, which has been killing my voice because like I, you guys don't believe me, but I'm not a talkative person in real life. I am super quiet. My friends that have known me for years describe me as serial killer quiet because I'm super quiet person in real life. Um, but that just lets you know that how I'm coming out of my normal character when I do this, um, do the show because I love it. Let's go back to tap. Uh, who would you rather, who would you trade our superstars? Off? I wouldn't trade any of our superstars. And that's the thing. That's why when a lot of fans have these trade ideas and they're like, we're, we're like for Ben Simmons or XYZ or whatever else. I'm just like, I don't want to Lonzo, Vooch, um, Damar, Zach. I don't want to trade. The chemistry between those four are too good. And we're seeing now that Vooch is back playing really, really good. I think it's too, too much to give to give away. And Vooch is, yes, Vooch has big negatives, right? He has big downside, but how seamless he makes the game when he's on on offense. I don't really, there's not too many players um that are available that you can you can imitate that with that you that can replace that yes there are players you can get that are solid on on offense and give you more defense and everything like that but the versatility he does in scoring passing wise you just can't really replace that so i wouldn't i wouldn't give that up for anyone anyone um and i'm i may be wrong for that we'll see start alizé johnson listen alizé going from getting no minutes to starting probably isn't going to happen like like I, I don't understand why alizé isn't getting more minutes this is something that comes up every stream that i do i don't understand it because Bulls need rebounding. He's hustling on rebounding. Um, Bulls need shot blocking. He's not the best shot blocker, right? But his energy definitely deters people at times. It has to be something going on with Alizé not grasping something. Something's not going right in practice that's keeping Alizé from cracking that rotation. And you got to think because he cracked the rotation in preseason, right? And that was when Patrick Williams was out. Now, understanding when Patrick Williams came back, why he wasn't. But now that Patrick Williams is gone, we really haven't seen much of Alizé Johnson at all this season. Compare that to the amount of minutes he was getting in preseason like yes you're facing lesser competition all the starters aren't going their full minutes but you would expect him to get 
at least a hand, like eight minutes a night at least. We don't have that for Alizé Johnson, especially once Troy Brown Jr. worked himself out of the lineup. It's questionable. But, you know, things happen. Things happen. Things happen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't understand it, but, you know, it is what it is. Just like Troy Brown Jr. gave us some really good minutes. And I'm sure at that point he's earned a chance to get a look. And especially now that we're going to be down Javante Green, Troy Brown is going to get some minutes and get a chance, right, to succeed again. I want to see Alizé get some of those chances. And it may not come until the Bulls are in a blowout. You know, the Bulls haven't held on to a big lead. Like, if we ever see the Bulls hold on to one of these 16, 20-point leads going into the fourth quarter, Alizé will probably get a chance to shine, so what he can do and maybe earn a handful of minutes coming on the back end and continue to build on that. But he just hasn't had that. Just hasn't had that. Alizé would get some PT, uh, but doubt he will start, especially with Troy Brown getting more PT. Well, the thing is, is that Troy Brown looked great in the first quarter, but then only ended the game with nine minutes. Nine minutes after that, after that first half, I should say. Really good first half from Troy Brown Jr. I would say defense and offensively. Um, but then he just didn't get many minutes. The Bulls are playing tight. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Yep, Caruso questionable for tomorrow. Who's gonna step up? Io is definitely if, if Caruso is out, right? So that automatically let's just for 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 the sake of argument, let's say we know we're missing Javante Green. Let's say Caruso's out too. That's gonna free up. Honestly, about 30 minutes for somebody to go, 30 more minutes to spread out. So Io is definitely going to get 20 plus minutes in that case. Um, we know Derek Jones Jr. is going to get probably about 18 to 20 plus minutes as well. Um, and at that point, Troy Brown Jr., Tony Bradley, um, and Alizé, whoever shows up and shows that they can play and is ready to, to contribute that night. They're definitely going to get some minutes. They need to be ready. We managed to uh, adapt with Vooch out, so I think we'll be good. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing overall. I, I, I said that early in the stream. The Bulls will find a way to adapt. It just sucks to not have going into a game against the number one team in the East when we can take over the number one seed. But don't doubt the Chicago Bulls' ability to face adversity. Now, if Javante Green and Caruso are out, it's going to take some major – it's going to take – Io's going to have to have a big game. Derrick Jones Jr. is going to have to have a big game. Uh, Tony Bradley is going to have to show up and keep his ass on the court. Um, and then – if if Troy Brown Jr. as well can have a solid game. Yeah, yeah, for sure. When I asked last night about starting Cruz over Javante, this is not the way. Definitely, definitely, Frank, definitely. This is not what we wanted. Not at all. Caruso uh, out with hurt. He keeps the second unit. Caruso keeps the team together. And certain, like, especially if you look at it, down the stretch when the game gets tight, when we started coming back, it was Lonzo, Caruso, DeMar, Levine, and Vooch out there. And that is that's basically four people who have played guard most of their career, right? Even though Demar has played small forward for the last handful of years, but that is players that had four base basically guards out there um, with Vooch, and the Bulls were able to to get it back. Like that's the thing with this team. Billy Donovan's rotations, as crazy as they may be, to have as many guards as what he does. They work, and that's because we have scrappy players. Caruso, you can't tell Caruso he can't guard a seven-footer. And Io DeSumo, DeSumo as well. You can't tell him he's not the biggest person on the court. So because of that heart, we we overcome a lot for sure. Caruso can have my leg. <laughs> uh, bro, first Levine was questionable. Now Kobe and Green out. Caruso questionable again. This is It's stressful. It's definitely stressful. It's definitely stressful. All right, we are about. 10 minutes over what I said I was going to be doing this stream for. Muggs ain't trying to get outplayed by Caruso. Uh, well, a lot of people get outplayed by Caruso. Caruso's dangerous out there. All right. Any last thoughts, comments, questions? Get them out there now because I'm going to be ending this stream in a minute and a half. <laughs> Kobe seems to be making his round across the team. Yep. And there's going to be other teams that face this as well. It's, it's going to be other teams that this happens to as well. Just be on the lookout for it because it's definitely happening. Definitely happening. Uh, but Javante Green out um, for the for the next 10 days plus. Uh, Kobe's been out uh, a couple of days as well. Uh, see you all tomorrow. Yeah, definitely. Live stream tomorrow after the Nets game. You best believe I'm live streaming that game. Um so yeah, it's it's we're gonna have fun after that game, even if the Bulls lose. One thing, and anyone who's in this chat now who's been in my live streams before, tell tell them they can vouch. We have a great time in these live streams, man. That, we have some great conversations. The first part of my live streams, uh, after game live streams, is really me just talking about the game and my thoughts. At that point, that usually lasts about fifteen minutes at most, maybe twenty. 
at that point, it's all about the comments. We just have a conversation back and forth based off the comments. We usually go about an hour, hour and a half. So it's always a fun time. Always a fun time. Hopefully this is the last call. Hopefully, 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 hopefully. But uh, that's it. That's my time. Like I said, I just dropped a video talking about uh, the, the Trailblazers' reported interest in Mark Eversley, what that could mean to the Bulls, and any offseason plans. Um, so go watch that video, please, for me. Um, Torian, great content. I thank you, bro, for that. Um, I appreciate a bad third quarter. If I was able to... Yeah, I feel that. Uh, you're the best Bulls creator out there. Thank you. I I I know it seems like disingenuous to say that, but when I, when I tell you guys, this channel's been around four months. I've been wanting to start a Bulls podcast for like three years. I kept talking myself out of it because I'm not an insider. I'm not a reporter. I don't have any any sources, nothing like that. And I figured, you know, who really wants to hear from me? But I finally decided to pull the trigger and start it. And you guys, four months, we're at 1,800 subscribers on the YouTube channel. We're at about 800 subscribers on the podcast side of things. And I, I can't stress enough how much i love you guys man i really do i know i end every video on peace i love you guys and that's because i mean that shit like bulls fans yeah i disagree with some of you guys sometimes but you guys have really supported me and have really lifted me up i started this by saying i was only going to do two videos a week i'm like five videos a week at this point now and that's just because of you guys man that's really and that's that's not any capping or anything like that that is truly because i love the audience and the community we're, we're building here at chicago bulls central so I just think the Bulls will get the job done against Brooklyn tomorrow. And Jonathan Washington Jr., that's what we're going to end the stream on. Positive thoughts and positive vibes. The Bulls will get the job done tomorrow against Brooklyn. Uh, but like I like to end every video on, man, I love you guys so much. I will see you guys tomorrow night on the live stream. I'll get it. I'll get it pre-posted to where you guys can like hit, click the bell and you get notified when I actually go live. I'll do that sometime tonight. But I'll see you guys tomorrow night after the Brooklyn game. Love you guys. Peace.